A topic as sensitive as this one deserves a disclaimer with a fair bit of care. If you're in a situation where you're potentially at risk, say, of losing your livelihood or potentially being harmed for your beliefs, then please prioritize safety over worship. Praying silently to the Teoe without offerings when your livelihood is at risk is understandable, and I doubt they'll judge you for doing so. For the rest of us who are more worried about judgment or just not ready to come out of the broom closet yet, this video is for you. It comes out of my experience and from stories I've heard around the community, and not every suggestion will work for everyone. How do you worship from the broom closet? Let's take a look. Karate. Any of you who have been around for a live stream where I've talked about my upbringing knows that I went through a Wiccan phase as a teen and had to hide my praxis. To the point where one of the books that a friend loaned me got burned and I had to figure out a way to pay her back for the book with a bit of guilt-laden interest. After that, I learned quite a number of sneaky ways to hide praxis, some of which I've employed even now as a Hellenist when visiting relatives or traveling to places where I'm not comfortable being open. There's gonna be two main focal points to this video. The first is about altar spaces and how to make one without parents, roommates, partners, etc. noticing it, and the second is about praxis itself and ways to get in time with the gods without drawing too much attention to yourself. Remember, Consider your own situation and what will and will not be considered unusual for you before taking any advice in this video or elsewhere online, and I cannot stress hard enough, stay safe. If getting your practice and belief discovered will put you in harm's way, please prioritize yourself, your safety, and your future. The gods are patient. I'm hoping many of these tips can apply to most pagan faiths, though obviously the praxis section is going to focus on Hellenism, as are all of the examples for the various gods and devotional activities that I'm going to give. With that out of the way, altars. One of the ways I hid mine growing up was to set aside the top of a bookshelf, a rather short one, and to use stuffed animals representing the gods that I worshipped at the time, along with animal figurines and sometimes other other toys that I found to be symbolic of the gods. Teoi.com has a fantastic and fairly thorough list of symbols and epithets for the gods, and remember that not all of them have to be on your altar all the time. The main gods you worship should be, and eventually when you can be more open on your own, you can get statues, amphorae, or other votive things that remind you more of the gods. Uh, by the way, this coming Thursday I'm going to be doing a video on votive offerings, but for now, later on I'll cover a little bit of the symbolism. For the Greek gods, Athena is associated with owls and snakes, Apollon with raven swans, and birds of all kinds, as well as mice and rats. Hephaestus with anything to do with the forge, so think swords, hammers, etc., as well as the donkey. Zeus is associated with lightning, storms, the eagle, the bull, oak trees, and olive trees. Hermes is associated with the ram, the hare, and the hawk, as well as with athletes and messengers. Poseidon is also associated with the bull, along with the horse and the dolphin, as well as seashells, pine trees, and celery. Dionysos is associated with the panther, bull, and serpent, as well as wine grapes and glasses and ivy. Hera is most famously associated with the peacock, but also with cows, lions, cuckoos, and pomegranates. Demeter is associated with the snake and pig, as well as wheat, mint, and poppy flowers. Artemis is associated with deer, bears, and anything to do with archery. Ares was associated with warriors, weapons of all kinds, and snakes. Aphrodite was associated with doves and geese, as well as with myrtle and roses. Get creative if you want an altar in the open space. A specific designated teddy bear can serve as Hera symbol, or a fake, regularly replaced real rose for Aphrodite, an action figure carrying a weapon for Ares, etc. The point is that the representations are there and meaningful to you, not that someone else would immediately recognize the altar for what it is. In fact, if you go out of your way to arrange it in such a way that it just looks like a toy display, most folks will be none the wiser. Another common thing I've seen in the community are travel altars in Altoid tins. These tend to be small shrines dedicated to one god or goddess, or hero, and have a couple of slips of paper glued inside with some symbols of the god in question. If you're sneaky with them, you can pass off making them as an art project and take them with you on walks and such where you might be less likely to be questioned for pouring a bit of water or juice on the ground for a libation. People have gotten incredibly creative with these on places like r slash Hellenism and even if you don't join the community, and trust me I don't blame you if you don't, I suggest lurking and checking out some of the art that folks have posted. Which brings me to the next bit artwork. You can create symbolic artwork that represents the gods without explicitly being them, especially if you tap places like teoi.com to get ideas for symbolism. Even if they're only on paper as opposed to sculptures and such, as long as it's meaningful to you, you can use that as a makeshift representation by hanging out on a wall above a bookshelf or a nightstand as though you're simply displaying your pride in it. Parents and roommates will likely be none the wiser, and it's not that weird to leave a small glass of water or juice on a nightstand, is it? In his video on the broom closet, my friend Ocean Keltoy actually 
actually talks about a friend of his who tore their altar apart and put it back together every day when their parents were away from different symbolic parts to do practice. This is obviously a risky solution, but it takes a great deal of dedication and I applaud them for the effort. Make sure that whatever option you choose is still within semi-normal behavior for you and doesn't draw too much attention to itself. The point of stealth practice is to be able to get your dedication in without having to worry about judgment. Don't do more than you need to. Which brings us to the praxis portion of the video. Again, I stress that you prioritize your safety above all else when attempting to practice in secret. If there isn't a way to give an offering without getting caught and potentially being harmed, then don't try to give the offering. Your safety and security are the most important thing. The gods understand. That said, prayer can feel a bit tricky as traditional Hellenic prayer is done out loud. However, obviously, if your practice has to be hidden, silent prayer is fine, and the modified prayer positions for my video on prayer will likely work well for you. Make sure one of your hands, the one you would choose, would be based off of whether it's the Olympic or Chthonic aspect of a deity you're praying to, is turned palm up while you pray if you can, even if you need to do so under a desk or while lying in bed because it's the only time you can get alone. It's likely best to focus just on the sacred days and the gods you remember to pray to, though designating a key code for a calendar can be a good way to remind yourself of the sacred days. It needs to be something that you understand, like the first two letters of the name of a deity, or an anagram that looks like the name of a teacher, or a note about an assignment that doesn't exist that you know actually corresponds to the deity of the day. If you can't find a way to track the sacred month, remember not to be too hard on yourself. You're already fighting an uphill battle by having to practice alone and in hiding, and I'm sure the gods understand. If you're able to get time alone on neighborhood or nature walks, bring along a bit of water, juice, or milk in a water bottle and pour out a libation when you're out of sight. Depending on where you are, it may or may not be safe to pray out loud when you do it, but especially if it's water, it shouldn't draw too much attention if you don't. Nature walks are also a really good time to connect with the Teoi in their natural spaces. See if you feel Apollon in the birds, Artemis in the wildlife, Zeus in the scent of the coming rain. Thanking the gods silently in prayer when doing normal activities associated with them is another way to keep your faith at the forefront of your mind, even if offerings might be a bit harder. For example, I've talked to my Discord server about how I do knitting and consider it a devotional act to Athena. Other examples could include giving a silent prayer to Demeter and wrapping vegetable trimmings from supper before tossing them, or asking Athena for her wisdom before and thanking her after for studying. If you're doing a metal shop or working on crafts involving metal or doing work on machines or repair work, thank Hephaestus for his work. When writing essays and such, ask Hermes for help and thank him at the end. Hestia rules over the flame of the kitchen stove, even if it's electric. Thanking Dionosos or the Karites next time you go out with friends and have an amazing time might be a great way to remind yourself of their role and joy in your life. Play music that you enjoy and think about Apollon. It can serve as an offering to him even if you didn't write it. Next time it rains, thank Zeus for coming. Ask Ares when you need inner strength, and tell Aphrodite silently about your next crush or Hera about your relationship struggles. Next time you're around or eat fish, thank Poseidon for his bounty. There are numerous other ways to appreciate and connect with the gods in daily life outside of a formal ritual practice. If you're hellbent on giving offerings to the Teoi and would like some suggestions on ways to do that, though, here are a few suggestions. If you live in a place with a yard and or garden, one option is to talk to whomever you live with about setting up a compost pile and silently offer things you bury there to the gods. Make sure they're relatively fresh when you do the prayer, though. It's not good practice to offer things that are rotting before you give them. This is also an area where small libations could be poured. Or you could save a bit of your drink at the end of dinner or lunch and pour it down the sink with a silent prayer beforehand to the god you're offering to. Don't do this with ancestors or chthonic aspects of deity if you can help it, but for the oronic aspects, it's perfectly acceptable. Scented candles can replace in sense if the folks you live with get squicky around incense. If you research the various herbs and the like that each god is associated with, many dollar stores even carry small scented candles that you can light to give a small scent offering. If you can't have candles, a small electric candle or electric light will do as a light offering to Hestia. If you can't do scents at all, the suggestions I outlined for libations and the like should work. You can also collect things in nature that are associated with the gods and give them as votive offerings if those around you won't react negatively to decorations from outside. Think crow feathers for Apollon, seashells for Poseidon, grape stems and grapes for Dionysos, etc. I'll be doing a whole video on votive offerings next week, but these are some starter suggestions based on symbolism from antiquity surrounding the gods. Remember though, all always, that whatever you're able to do right now is enough. If you can't have an altar because folks go through your things, or because you would be judged for collecting things that can stealth as altar objects, you don't have to have one to be a Hellenist. There are many, many ways to connect with the gods, even if you can't have the full open praxis that you currently dream of. The gods understand, and are still with you, even if it takes time to be able to show your devotion to them the way that you want to. Don't judge yourself if spoons or circumstances prevent you from doing everything that you desire. The gods were there long before you were born, and will be there long after after you pass, they can be patient if they need to.
Thank you so much for sticking through that. If you're new here, bury the subscribe button and leave the like somewhere in the woods. Drop down into the comments and let me know what you've done to hide your practice, or tell me that everyone should just be going to church and that I'm risking immortal souls with this video if that's your speed. Special thanks to Gaelic Knox. Links are in the description as always to their website and Twitter. And special thanks to my patrons. I know some of you have screen names rather than your real names because you too are in hiding, and most of my patrons actually helped me decide on this topic over others which I had partially written scripts for. You all help keep the lights on at the channel, and with the house repairs that I'm having to make this month, your money means even more because without it, I couldn't afford my editing software and JSTOR access every month. May the cycle of reciprocity between us ever be positive. And remember, we're stronger together.